Democrats are currently trying to buzzer shot a significant bill through Congress before midterms come. And the current iteration of this bill is a whole 725 pages of comprehensiveness, and reads with the elocution of a dictionary mixed with an IKEA instruction manual. Now because who would want to read that? I'm going to try to summarize it in three separate videos, breaking down its three main parts. You got your healthcare, your tax reform, and the environmental bit. So first, in case you somehow managed to avoid reading the title or seeing the picture in the corner here, we're talking about the healthcare. Now this bill makes two large changes to the current system. First, allowing Medicare to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies, and second, extending the Affordable Care Act subsidies. So first, the Medicare one. You see, Medicare is a government program in charge of buying medicine for old people. A lot of old people in America, and most of them need a lot of drugs. You ain't doing business with Medicare, and you ain't doing business in America. Now this gives Medicare some major, major leverage when it comes to drug prices and drug companies. They're basically the gatekeepers to the elderly population. Now currently, Medicare is a bit like a tourist at a bazaar. What? I can get this Rolex for $200? Well, I don't need to negotiate. Thank you and have a great day. Medicare is unable to negotiate prices for prescription drugs, so the cost is set by the manufacturer. Now what this bill would allow Medicare to do is say, hold on a second, $200 for this Rolex? But I just saw Canada buy the exact same thing for $50. You don't give it to us for less and I'm walking away. Now this one change could save the government $288 billion over the next 10 years. When you pay less, you save more. Now of course, this proposal isn't without its shortcomings. First, this only allows Medicare to negotiate with drug companies. If you aren't a 65 year old in Medicare, this doesn't really change that much for you. Our drug prices are still determined by the private insurance company we selected negotiating against the pharmaceutical companies themselves. Or even worse, if you don't have any sort of insurance whatsoever, it's a negotiation between yourself and the pharmaceutical companies. Now the hope here is that Medicare could negotiate a pretty good price and then publish that price. And then all of the private insurer companies we work with will just copy their homework. Hey, my granddad's paying 30 bucks for insulin and I'm still paying 1000. Negotiate harder or I'm finding another insurance company with better negotiators. Now, of course, foreign countries are already setting incredibly low benchmark prices for the exact same products. So I'm a bit skeptical this is going to change things for America's young and middle-aged. Now the other argument against this policy, well, it emerged the last time there was a policy debate about it, back when Bush was running things. Now this argument, it's a bit weird, and it requires really getting into the weeds on what Medicare is. So when you hear people say, Medicare for all, abolish private insurance. First thing you probably think to yourself is, well, Medicare is a government program and definitely not private insurance, right? Well, the thing is, that's not really the case. You see, Medicare is a public-private partnership. It's basically just a government program that contracts out elderly coverage to a bunch of private companies. Go on right now, go to the Medicare website and you get to pick plans from all the same people who have been trying to sell you insurance since you got picked off of your parents' plans. Now, this makes things really a bit confusing when you start saying over and over again that hey, now the government is going to be negotiating drug prices. Bush objected to this negotiation plan because, according to his Department of Health and Human Services head, federal price negotiations would unravel the whole structure of the Medicare drug benefit, which relies on competitive drug pricing plans driving down prices. 
gotta have all those competing private insurance companies working under Medicare to keep prices low. Real mission accomplished there. Now he went on to argue that this whole system works because we got hundreds of different Medicare plans with all sorts of different benefits stretching across every different state, all of which have their own copays and negotiated prices. The government kicking down the door and suddenly mandating contractors buy drugs at set prices would totally get in the way of the free market's ability to extract money from the masses as efficiently as possible. Now, the more you read this whole situation, the more you realize it's just a whole system set up with a bunch of small to medium sized insurance companies from Medicare to everyone else just trying to negotiate deals with the one guy on top of it all who owns a patent monopoly on necessary drugs. So yeah, he's going to have the pricing power. Now this law would try to change things a little bit by setting up a confederacy of the elderly to come together as a block and have the government negotiate their prices, and then have the private Medicare contractors rewrite their policies with those specific drugs priced according to the government agreements. The government, well, they're going to start by selecting 10 drugs according to this bill and negotiating their prices, they're like dip their toe in the water, see how it goes. If things go well, well they'll throw another 10 drugs onto the Barbie in 2026. Now the major other thing this bill does to healthcare is extend the Affordable Care Act insurance subsidies that were set to expire this year. We got two more years of subsidized healthcare. Headline here, nothing's changing. The snooze button was hit on this discussion, so see y'all in two years. The good news here is we won't see an artificial spike in healthcare premiums during a global pandemic as government price support would have expired. So that's what this negotiated bill does to the healthcare industry at large. I'm about to publish two more videos describing its impact on taxes and the environment. So buckle up buckaroos. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I created a complete playlist of my coverage of this bill so you can understand exactly what's in it. Link over here to that. Thank you to my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, click on the link in the description to join this group of exceptional individuals. Remember to like, subscribe, and do all that fun YouTube stuff. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.